Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, my name is John Pitcher and it's my pleasure to be presenting to you today around the subject of how design and manufacturing benefit from cloud-based CAD. Just a couple of little things about us first here at VinZero. We're all about fostering innovation through delivering software and hardware solutions, consulting, training, development and managed services. We've become a trusted technology advisor to our customers through the breadth and depth of our service offering and technical expertise, our commercial flexibility and high levels of customer service and understanding. Before we launch into today's subject, just a couple of things about myself. Um, as I said, my name is John Pitcher. My background is in the manufacturing sector. I started my career as a fitter machinist and progressed into the CAD CAM space about 17 years or so ago. I've been involved in various aspects of engineering, including hydraulics and pneumatics, machine design and manufacture, CNC programming, and general heavy industrial fitting and machining. I joined the Auditors channel, as I said, about 17 years ago, and have been working as a trainer and tech engineer for various Autodesk applications during this period. I've also supported a number of 3D printing or additive manufacturing environments uh, during this time as well. For today's webinar though, we're going to be exploring a few ways that design and manufacturing can utilize cloud-based CAD solutions and environments to improve, improve business and general workflows. As we speak with our customers, there are some things that always come through from their questions. And I'm sure many of you have got these questions on your mind as well. They're looking uh, for ways to reduce cost, to remain competitive in things uh, in the, the componentry that you design and manufacture, and that you're looking for better ways to work between teams and with your customers. Some of you are looking to improve the transition to manufacturing. And if you've got any of those questions or similar questions, we hope we can address them for you today. First up, I'd like to briefly chat about Autodesk Product Design Manufacturing Collection. Now, many of you would be aware of, of this particular uh, software solution that Autodesk have been offering for, for a number of years now. The collection includes a large array of applications that span across the entire process from concept right through to product delivery. And uh, of course, many of these apps are cloud connected. And uh, really, that's what we want to talk to you about today and uh, hopefully um, bring to light some of the elements of the Autodesk solutions uh, that help. So the Product Design Manufacturing Collection includes a, a bunch of tools that uh, help us design, simulate, analyze dimension tolerances. We can do nesting, we can do CAM, we can do factory layouts. And all the data can be stored or, or managed in a secure project. Best of all, this collection is available in a single and affordable subscription program. So it includes all the tools that you need to, uh, to be involved in all elements of the design manufacturing process. So effectively, we're going to be looking today at, uh, as we said, more of the cloud-based CAD design tools. And I'll uh, certainly be talking through a number of these particular offerings. And most of you would be familiar with the Inventor tool that Autodesk have been offering for the past 30 or so years. A uh, very powerful 3D CAD CAM CAE program that allows us to not only design our product, but to simulate various elements of the product design process and workflow and uh, utilize various elements of the cloud to allow us to work through that. And what we're gonna be talking about today is um, some of the other further offerings that you could perhaps benefit from in your workflow, including things like Fusion 360. And uh, we want to talk about some of the amazing tools included in that little application. Um, not only that we can link to Inventor, but certainly elements of that. Now, I appreciate that some of you may already be using Fusion 360, but for those of you that have not, Fusion is a, a cloud oriented CAD CAM and simulation solution, not unlike Inventor in its capabilities, but very much um, it was developed with the uh, high speed internet revolution of the 90s and 2000s. And consequently, it includes many applications that are cloud connected, if you like, um, or that we can utilize as a 
a way of working with high-speed internet, which is, um, yeah, whilst that's been around for maybe 20 or 30 years now, uh, many of us are uh, perhaps not utilising the power of the cloud, and that's what we're really wanting to talk about today. So as far as Fusion 360, uh, like I said, some of you may well be aware of that. But first up, I'd just like to talk about what's exactly at the core of Fusion 360 itself. Um, and look, uh, like I said, some of you may already be using Fusion and that's really great. But just to perhaps discuss a couple of little items here in relation to Fusion itself, Fusion 360 is a cloud enabled CAD system. So you might have also heard of AutoCAD 360, BIM 360 or Drive 360. Many of these apps are cloud dependent apps. So they are basically only available on the cloud. Fusion, however, can happily function in offload, uh, sorry, in offline mode for a period, meaning that you can save your um, your files to your local drive quite easily. Uh, and I'll go through this in a in a live demonstration a little later in our in our discussion this morning. But basically, the cloud collaboration tools means that everybody in your team um, on their chosen device can have continuous connection to your designs. So we can obviously collaborate a lot more smoothly uh, using some of those functionalities. Now, that's provided you save your files to a cloud type scenario. If you choose to save them locally, you can do that. But obviously, you would need to look at another solution then for sharing files across your team. Another great feature of Fusion 360 is that um, it's one of the only CAD systems that can function natively on a Macintosh machine. So if you are a Mac user, you'll be pleased to hear that. Um, so yeah, very good that we can do that. Now, it's not just a CAD system. Fusion 360 includes a CAM workspace. It includes a rendering workspace and a bunch of simulation tools. Uh, that means that all of our data can be um, used in the one application. So uh, as we said before, it also has the ability to run various simulations and a couple of other little tools called generative design that we'd like to deep dive into a little later on. So it has the ability to create sheet metal components, animate exploded assemblies, just like we might do in, in the Inventor product. It also has some very powerful surfacing tools to work with things like T-splines or, or NURB surfaces for those of you that are in that space. So let's uh, let's swing over and talk about some of the uh, the power of Fusion. And I would like to uh, to launch into this in a moment, and we'll uh, we'll fire up our Fusion product and uh, and have a quick look at how that uh, that all functions and some of the different tools there. So I'd like to uh, to launch into that in a moment. As far as Fusion goes, it's a uh, it's a like I said, it was built during the um, time of the Internet Revolution. Uh, so the high-speed internet revolution obviously had a, a grave difference and impact on the way that we work. So most of us would be using net banking and things like that these days. So I think you'll agree that our lives have changed a little um, since having to go and stand in a queue at the bank. So uh, the same applies for manufacturing. And uh, really, Fusion, like I said, was built from the ground up with this cloud sort of logic um, uh, as part of the workflow and uh, for utilizing the various elements of cloud computing and uh, the various tools for that. So let's talk a little bit more about some of those uh, capabilities. And um, I've just got a couple more slides on this and then we'll jump into our demonstration. So Fusion gives you the ability to create your concepts and uh, look at those complex design processes with ease. We've got flexibility between parametric and freeform design. So we've got some very, very powerful interactions there. Uh, we can look at things like aesthetics and ergonomics and uh, how that's actually going to be uh, achieved and uh, the various elements of modeling flexibility with things like push-pull gestures and uh, all of your sort of fairly traditional functionality for working with that. So flexible um, modeling and uh, some of the different approaches to 3D modeling make it easier to focus on the task at hand and not so much how you're actually going to achieve that task. So I guess it's helpful to make a, a change to a product and know that it isn't going to affect other features. And uh, you know, editing that geometry can be done directly um, using push-pull, as I said, or some of the other tools. 
We can also access other tools to edit and repair imported scans or mesh models. So things like STL files or OBJ files might be something that you are frequently faced with. I mentioned generative design. Now, this is a, a very much a cloud-based uh, CAD tool that, um, that we can uh, look at utilising as far as working within our CAD and CAM and manufacturing type environment. So generative design, uh, again, really came to, uh, to the fore when we talked about uh, things like add additive manufacturing, when we look at 3D printing componentry. Obviously, um, this is something that's a, an emerging technology, but we're seeing a lot of development in, uh, in many of those spaces. So this is something that's quite unique to Fusion 360 and the Autodesk application. So rather than manually modeling uh, a component, what we can do is uh, give the software certain parameters and then it will basically model the geometry that we might uh, uh, like to, to sort of see as a default system. What we do then is we apply certain constraints. So we apply parameters to our model. Uh, we apply things like... Um, uh, areas where we wish to attach the model to a another a component, maybe, um, and and also areas where we uh, know there is an obstacle, so we need to avoid certain areas, and then we look apply loads to our to our model to come up with the uh, the correct um, uh, form and function for that particular component, and then we run it through a generative design uh, computer iteration tool that basically gives us a series of uh, iterations of our component that we can choose from. So we can look at the different uh, models, as you can see there on the screen. Uh, we can look at the different ways that we could manufacture this part. Again, it will be dependent on uh, the type of material that's available, the type of material we're actually utilizing, and the software can do that. So it can go through and do a test for us, and um, maybe we want to reduce the weight of a particular component, obviously, for, for uh, industries like aerospace or um, anything in that nature, very keen to uh, to reduce any excess material from a weight perspective. Um, so yeah, there's uh, different things we can look at and study in relation to that. In the end, then we can um, select uh, the the preferred option and uh, obviously go forward with our manufacturing process there, whether it be on a, a CNC machine, a two, three, four, five axis. CNC machine, or whether we wish to utilize a 3D print device. And uh, we'll certainly be delving into this a little bit more uh, in a moment as we as we work through our, uh, our presentation today. So we can make various design changes and uh, simulate things. So again, Fusion has uh, simulation tools that are very, very powerful and quite user-friendly. Uh, we've got the option for static studies. We can do modal studies and uh, nonlinear stress type studies. Uh, we've got a whole range of FEA options there. We can look at things like vibration. Uh, we can uh, do some dynamic simulations uh, in relation to buckling and uh, various elements of um, the FEA environment, including things like uh, flow analysis or heat transfer analysis. So we've got quite a lot of tools available to us within the software that allow us to do that. Electronics is another area that's quite unique to Fusion 360. It's uh, quite a comprehensive tool for developing printed circuit boards. And uh, obviously we've got a library within the software. Basically it means that we can um, link up all of our electronic scenarios within our CAD model and also our mechanical models. So for anything in that space where those two systems cross-pollinate, we can obviously work through the various designs for that. So we've got a complete set of tools for doing, like I said, PCB libraries and uh, component selection wizards and things like that as well. Obviously, we have we may still have the need for documentation of our designs. So Fusion does also have a very nice little uh, drawing package that, um, yeah, is quite a... Um, Easy system to use, very, very simple and very uh, intuitive, I think, for creating your 2D output, whether it be uh, output to a PDF or a printed a printed file. So we can quickly view um, and uh, share designs with stakeholders within the manufacturing process. 
of course, all of these things are associative. So if a, an element changes within the design, obviously our 2D drawing will update accordingly, uh, as would our assembly or our exploded view of that particular file. And of course, we can still output to DWG or to DXF uh, if you're working in a laser cut type environment or uh, something of that nature. As I mentioned, Fusion 360 also includes an amazing little cam engine. So if you're uh, in a CNC type environment and you would like to, um, yeah, uh, explore some of the various options there, we've got a whole range of environments there for water jet cutting, um, additive manufacturing, like I said, 3D printing. Um, so working with, uh, with that and looking at how materials are going to be best utilized for certain environments or certain applications or uh, even so far as things like prototyping are concerned. Obviously, uh, we want to uh, be able to quickly create a prototype. And uh, this is a space that uh, 3D printing is obviously frequently used for. And we can look at how different components are going to uh, react and different materials are going to uh, interact with each other and how we can best uh, come up with a workable solution for each of those scenarios. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, we've also got the option there for uh, collaboration. This is a very big part of working in the cloud. And obviously, um, unless you're working with a, a system like Vault or one of those other type uh, PLM uh, systems or a, a data management system, um, Fusion has a very clever system of uh, allowing you to share data via a cloud storage area, a bit like Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, but it's integrated within the software. And I'll certainly show you uh, how that sort of uh, functions and uh, some of the benefits of utilizing that and working with that as far as the Fusion software is concerned. As I mentioned, uh, we've also got a, a photo realistic rendering option so we can go through and um, do some rendering. Now, this is another tool that is uh, available to upload to a cloud processor. Uh, meaning that Autodesk have got a bunch of servers and effectively, uh, if we've modeled a, a motorcycle or whatever it might be that we're working on, we can obviously uh, upload that to upload that process uh, to a cloud server and uh, have the render take place on an Autodesk server rather than uh, locking down your local processor. Uh, Autodesk um, have what's called cloud credits, so we can purchase cloud credits and uh, allow that process and that particular um, uh, function to, to happen on a cloud server rather than uh, locking up your local machine, meaning you have to wait for that to, to work. And generally, the a rule of thumb is that it will happen in one-tenth of the time um, compared to if you were to do the, the render locally. So uh, there's a massive time saving in that sense that if you need to get a job out on Friday afternoon and and here it is Thursday morning or um, well, Friday morning, you've got to get the job to the customer. Obviously, you can render it a whole lot more quickly using the Autodesk servers. So Fusion 360, as I said, is uh, is a very clever system. It uh, allows us to work with a whole range of different formats. So we can import files from Creo or SolidWorks or Solid Edge or Step Files. Um, pretty much any type of CAD system we can import into Fusion 360 and carry on working with our downstream uh, scenarios and uh, how we would like to uh, to see that function. So what I'd like to do now is, is switch over and just briefly chat to you about um, Inventor and some of the different uh, tools and how that connects with Fusion 360. So I'll be uh, jumping into Inventor first, just to have a quick look at um, yeah, two or three of the different areas of interest there and, uh, and how we can sort of work with those particular elements and, uh, and work with those designs. So this particular, um, yeah, uh, I've got a little jet engine model here on screen. And um, yeah, as you can see, we've got various elements to that and uh, various areas of that particular design. Um, if I was, for instance, to decide that I want to create this intake fan, but I want to take it out to a to a cam engine. So I'm going to open the, the fan 
And uh, let's have a bit of a look at that. So it's quite a complex little shape. And maybe I decide that this would uh, be a, a really nice component to perhaps 3D print initially. And then perhaps we're going to do some machining on it afterwards to uh, fine finish or, or whatever it might be to uh, to machine certain elements that, uh, that need a tighter tolerance or something like that. So within the Inventor 2024 product, which is what I'm using today, uh, we've got this tab up the top here. Uh, to link us to Fusion 360. Now, some of you may have explored this already, but there's some really, really clever tools in here to allow us to uh, simply uh, cross over to the Fusion 360 environment and to work with the cloud solution. So um, if I decide that I want to 3D print this particular part, I can simply select here, and this will take me into an environment where I can uh, go off and upload my file to a um, uh, to a fusion type in environment. So up here, this is linking now with my um, um, with my fusion software, and it's going to upload my my file. And I can choose where I'd like to put that in which particular project this might be. And this will make a little more sense in a moment when I uh, when I jump in here. But effectively, um, in here, what I'd like to do is uh, perhaps load this up into a um, uh, one of these projects. I'm uh, just having a quick look here. Um, yeah. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop it in this VIN 023 project and I'm going to upload that. Okay, so it's saying here that the file is going to be uploaded to Fusion 360 team. Basically what this does now, it saves a copy of this fan file and it's going to upload it to to my Fusion 360 environment. Now, just before I leave uh, the Inventor space, and again, Inventor, uh, don't get me wrong, Inventor has some very, very powerful tools in here. One of them that some of you may have come across in the past, uh, and is a little bit like our generative design environment, is what we call Shape Generator. So this is sort of a, a fairly simple tool that just basically allows us to look at maybe where we've got waste material, maybe where we've got uh, situations where we've got excess material. Basically with this one, what we do is we tell Inventor that you know maybe our part by default, maybe our fan weighs four kilos. What we'd like to know is where we can remove material from this and maybe say, look, at the, the maximum weight my engineer has told me that I'm allowed is three and a half kilos. So I can put in a target weight and Inventor will then look at my model and I can say, well, I don't want to change the fan blades because obviously these have been best designed for uh, wind flow, but maybe I can remove move some of the material out of the hub section here. And what this would then do is say, well, we set up a, a series of parameters where we tell it we don't want it to um, change the holes here, but we're happy for it to maybe remove some of this excess material around the centre here. So it would obviously allow us to... Uh, to go that path. So Shape Generator is quite a, um, a clever tool. It, uh, it sort of allows us to uh, do this sort of thing where this might have been our original design. So we've prof I'll cut this, but look, the customer doesn't really want uh, this part to weigh five kilos. So we can obviously go and remove excess material uh, going on uh, after we've applied our our constraints and our loads. So maybe this particular part is going to have 100 newton meters of load on this point. We've fixed it here and here, and uh, then we can obviously see where we can remove the material. So this can be a really good guideline as far as uh, as working with the shape generator type environment. So yeah, like I said, we create a study, we assign material, we apply forces and pressures, and fix constraints to uh, to simply look at how that might uh, that might function. So we won't be going through that in actual fact today. We'll, we'll leave it there. But what I'd like to do now is um, I'm just going to come back over here and um, so I can refresh. So I'm going to now jump into the Fusion software. And uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you about um, yeah, uh, the different elements of how Fusion does this. So Fusion 360 has a slightly smarter system in the sense that um, in here, we've obviously got a, uh, uh, seven different modes as to how we would like to uh, work within this particular CAD software. One of the amazing things about Fusion is the fact that Fusion has a 
um, basically a cloud storage area on this left side. So this little area here, my data panel, is actually showing me files that are stored under my Fusion 360 drive area, which is effectively like Dropbox in that sense, or, or Google Drive. Um, so effectively, these particular items are saved here. So if I was to jump in here and have a quick look here, um, back in here, I'm hoping I can find my... Um, so inside my VIN 023 uh, project, I'll now be able to find uh, my intake fan. So here's that file that I just brought in from uh, Inventor. And uh, yeah, if I was to go and open that file, we could then uh, look at how we can perhaps uh, optimize that for 3D printing uh, and work through some of those areas. And we'll certainly, um, we'll come back to the generative design side of things, but basically what this is doing now is opening my IPT file from Inventor. Again, this was a relatively complex part, but as you'll see in a moment, once this, uh, once this fires up, well, actually, maybe while that's firing up, I'll just talk to you briefly about the uh, other workspaces that are available. So as we said, up here in this section of our Fusion 360 screen, uh, we've got our design space, which is where we are at the moment. So there's our, uh, there's our um, fan for our, uh, our little uh, jet engine that we looked at in Inventor. And effectively now, if I wanted to go through a process and, and look at how this was going to be able to be 3D printed, in actual fact, up here, we've got a, uh, a 3D print option, uh, but we can go in here and set up materials. We can look at uh, different, uh, different areas of that. And basically when we select this, we've got the option to output uh, this file ready for 3D printing. And uh, we can pick the format here, whether it be a 3MF, an STL, or an OBJ type file, which are the four main 3D print files. And then if we want to launch into a particular 3D printing utility, which in this case is, uh, I've got an option of Preform or Cura here, um, which are two slicing softwares that allow us to move into the 3D printing space. Anyway, we won't go too much further with that one, but I think you get the idea that we can quite quickly interact with uh, Fusion Inventor to utilize some of the cloud tools that are available inside of the Fusion 360 application. So as I mentioned, um, in this area here, we've got these five different environments, if you like, that are available to us. Um, maybe if we just take these from top to bottom. So design is where we're going to uh, do our various design modifications and creation processes. So uh, we've got a bunch of options in there. This particular one is the one that I was talking about earlier where we've got uh, what we call generative design. Now, effectively with this particular scenario, if we enter this environment and uh, sort of look at how this particular part might be made. So this particular clevis, which uh, perhaps is a, a type of shape that might sit on the end of a hydraulic cylinder or on a excavator arm or something like that. So we can fix uh, one end to the, uh, the excavator arm, maybe via these four bolts. And then we would normally have like a yoke arrangement on this section here. But effectively with generative design, what we can actually do is we can take um, invent, take a file and apply loads and areas where we wish to preserve. So what we can do is set up this sort of an environment. So if you can imagine, here's our four bolt down holes for our clevis, and here's our, um, our mounting hole. Basically what we do is we say, well, I, don't, I know my clevis needs to have uh, this space here, can't be, uh, this would have to be an obstacle because maybe my hydraulic ram rotates around that particular component. So we need to have that. And then effectively we can go and tell um, Fusion that that's the parameters. We can then tell it that we've got 500 Newton meters of load pulling on this to operate our, uh, our excavator arm or whatever this particular component might be. So when we go forward with the process for generative design, what, what the software does, it uploads a copy of our Clevis to a system where it goes and generates a series of outcomes. So as you can see here, we've got a total of 12 outcomes and we can go and select from any of these outcomes to actually say, well, this one here particularly suits my workflow. Uh, I like this design and it's gonna work okay. 
Uh, so therefore, I want to be able to um, utilize that particular shape. So effectively, when we look at how our clevis was maybe designed in the last 50 years <laughs> um, or so, this, is, this would be a very traditional design. Moving forward, this is the type of product that Fusion is going to output and say, well, if you wish to utilize 3D printing to maybe do a prototype for one of these, this is perhaps how your part is going to look. And we actually did 3D print this um, here in Adelaide. We've got a, uh, a little uh, Mark Forge printer set up where we were able to print this actually in stainless steel. So we did print a final result and um, yeah, that particular part uh, was, uh, was able to be um, generated and uh, yeah, came out with quite a good result. So as you can see, if, uh, and I'm not sure you might've seen this before, this was the physical file that was generated using the generative design process, if you like. And again, I know most of you are going to look at this and say, well, you know, that's going to take a lot to machine all these little areas. But I guess it's um, uh, it's, a, it's a scenario that we can choose to utilise or, uh, or ignore, if you like, as far as whether the physical model needs to actually be of that shape or not is, I guess, open to conjecture. But that's going to give you the same strength as this particular part here. And I believe from memory, it was a 60% weight saving. So we managed to reduce by even just cutting out these sections here, which were irrelevant to the actual uh, form and function of the model. So um, yeah, quite a uh, an interesting uh, example of how we might utilize that. Now, obviously this has been happening in aerospace and uh, so companies like NASA have been using this for many, many years. But now because of uh, the nature of software and how things are moving forward with design and those workflows, we're finding now that the automotive industry, again, are utilizing this functionality. So here's a classic example of a, uh, uh, a seatbelt bracket from a General Motors vehicle. Uh, that Autodesk were involved in um, collaborating on. Basically, the component on the left was made from eight individual pressed metal brackets that were uh, fabricated and uh, attached together using various methods of uh, welding and uh, bolting together, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and effectively, the cost was X, Y, Z. And what, uh, what the engineers at General Motors said, well, these are the parameters. So effectively, they ran this through the Autodesk application. They came up with a part that was 40% lighter, 20% stronger. Now, admittedly, in today's terminology, that particular part might cost a whole um, lot more to make in mass production. But at the end of the day, the, the concept was that they were able to choose from a series of iterations and look at how that might work. So again, uh, as we move towards more lean environments and uh, less waste and uh, a lot of those sort of functionalities, uh, we've got various options to, uh, to work with that. So generative design, if you like, is a, um, is a technology that will help us to explore uh, various ideas and uh, look at how we can perhaps use that. Again, we can choose to use a server solution for this, where basically, um, yeah, very large uh, servers will do the number crunching for us and uh, work through the processing of those particular elements. So I hope that uh, that helps. Um, I want to play uh, as a uh, concluding thought, um, just a, a little uh, example, which might look a little bit futuristic to you, but um, I guess, um, yeah, these are, these are the options that we've got now as far as working with that. So this example is a um, is an example of a motorcycle, as you can see. And uh, what I'd like to just do is play this through. Uh, hopefully everything will go correctly here and uh, this will all work correctly. But effectively, generative design is a scenario where we look at uh, a number of parameters. So in this case, obviously, we've got a, a swing arm on a motorcycle that we're going to make. And effectively, when we look at this, the concept is that we set up regions of attachment. So we look at the areas that we're going to preserve, if you like, or where our swing arm is going to attach to our motorcycle. Then we look at the obstacles. So we've got the rear tire, obviously, the drive chain, the gearbox, et cetera, et cetera. And then we apply a load to the back wheel and say, well, this, this back wheel is gonna take so many Newton meters of force. What the software then does is spits out a whole assortment of iterations 
of different options for us that we can utilize from an engineering perspective. We can then narrow that down and look at potentially, uh, you know, the most uh, rigid design. We can look at the design that is perhaps, um, you know, the, the most um, the most cost effective. We can look at the most, the least mass, if you like. Um, and again, I realize this is a rather futuristic looking thing, but uh, that's the concept that we can utilize as far as design software is available now. So there's some very, very powerful functionalities. And obviously we can go and take that into a um, scenario where we can work with uh, within that particular um, situation to allow us to see how that particular part might be uh, uh, be generated um, or whatever it might be. So I guess the whole concept of generative design is it's giving us more flexibility in a shorter time frame to make informed decisions on what is the best manufacturing method for a particular component. So I hope that helps. Um, as I said, I'll uh, be uh, that'll, that'll be the end of our presentation for today. I'll stay online for five or 10 minutes um, if there's any questions uh, that you'd like answered. More than happy to uh, to chat further about the, uh, the concepts of, um, yeah, uh, generative design, or if you've got questions about uh, the various elements of the Autodesk solutions. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining us today. We uh, we appreciate uh, your time and uh, thanks for uh, coming along. And I hope what we've uh, we've discussed today is uh, is informative and useful to you uh, as you move forward with uh, with your design environment. So thanks again for joining us and uh, have a great day ahead.